Pixel basically connects um, to an outside server from a website. Uh, it's basically calling a script. So let's go to ESPN again. Um, and as this loads, you can see this little icon up here start to increase. So we went up to 12. It's called Ghost Free. It's a free plugin for major browsers. Um, you can go install it. Um, and uh, basically, you can visit any website and block third party tracking, third party pixels. Uh, people basically trying to do what I'm about to explain. So you can see here when I click on this, it's just looking at the source code and the network calls that are going on from ESPN to third parties um, and then categorizing them based on patterns that they've you know, seen for this is Blue Kai, this is Double Click, etc. So Blue Kai, basically, when I loaded this page, Blue Kai said, okay, Nick is here. Um, let's bucket him into a pool of users that we know have visited ESPN.com. So right now they don't know much about me because I'm just here. So they might put me in a segment of users that's like interested in sports, but it could be like a low level of interest. So let's say I click on NHL. Okay, so the same goes for um, this one picked up 13. So there's an extra one on this page. Uh, looks like ad services. So it says beacons. Um, so it's basically talking to some other people. You can see Telium is also bucketing me couple other people. So Blue Kai just bucketed me again though. So Blue Kai just sent them the, you can see these placeholders for page name. There's all sorts of stuff in here. So now um, Blue Kai, the company, knows that I'm interested in NHL over these other sports because I just got here. So um, now an advertiser in something like Meteora or another um, ad targeting platform, DSP, could select me in a bucket. So a campaign could have just picked me up that was like, now when Nick leaves ESPN or loads another page on ESPN, let's customize the ads or the content to um, be NHL type of ads, right? Like now I could get ads for hockey skates because I just looked on here. I mean, that's a bad example because me looking at an NHL page doesn't mean I need hockey skates, but you get the idea. So, um, What's happening here is Blue Kai has a pixel on ESPN.com. So let me see if I can load this again. And I'm going to reload. And you can see all the network calls going on here. So let me see if I can type in Blue Kai. Yep. Oops. Blue Kai. Um, so now you can see that Blue Kai here is loading this script right here. Um, so it's hitting this URL. And ESPN is passing things to them like, um, let's see if I can find something, page hint, um, maybe bad example here, page name, ESPN, um, channel, NHL. So you can see that they're, they're tagging me for NHL and some of these other things. They're basically just putting tags on Nick. So there's all different types of pixels. This is a third party data pixel. So this is to bucket me into those pools of users that advertisers can use to target. Um, so you'd have to be a client of Blue Kai or use Blue Kai through Meteora or another DSP, something like that. Um, then there's other pixels too. So let me go back here to Ghost Free. Um, or let's say, let's say that this was an e-com site. So let's say that I, instead of looking at NHL, I just looked at a specific product. Um, the pixel for Meteora in that sense would look a lot like this. So you would see this piece of code and the number three just is my ID. So each advertiser is going to have their own pixel. So if I'm that e-com site, let's take backcountry.com. So let's go to backcountry. I'm going to load up that frame down here so we can see what's going on to network. Um, Let's look at Ghost Free really quick so we can save some time here. Beacons, beacons, beacons. So there's a Facebook custom audience pixel firing. So that's the same thing as Blue Kai. It's putting me into an audience list because I visited the home page. Then there's Facebook FBX. So that's Facebook Exchange. You got Google, a um, bunch of people in here. Nanigans. Let's see. I guess we can use the uh, Facebook one as an example. So Facebook, internal redirect. Let's do that again. Facebook, there we go. Uh, Facebook connect. 
Um, anyways, so if I go to New Rivals and I click on this hydration reservoir, um, Meteora might file, fire this pixel, which basically makes a connection. It just says, hey, um, backcountry communicate with Meteora. Let's set up basically a stream across servers. And I'm going to send you the user ID that I just saw. So, and other things that this pass might be the URL we're currently on. So it just passed this URL, right? And instead of targeting an audience, what Meteora might let you do now is now we're just gathering data from backcountry. So this pixel just passed in um, to Meteora's servers. It said, hey, Nick's here. This is the URL he's on. Um, this is how long he's been there, all that kind of stuff to get um, buyer intent on what I'm looking at, which products I looked at the longest. And then um, let's say I put this into my cart. Um, so that might have just fired a pixel. So now there might be a pixel on this page that's a cart pixel. So you could say, um, you can see items in the cart here. So this is the order, this is the conversion pixel, but you can do items in the cart down here. So you could say, if this piece of code was on this page right here, you can see Ghost Reloaded 15 pieces of code. That's the way I'm gonna explain it. Um, then now Meteora knows that I went to the cart with this product. So that now means that I'm much more likely to want an ad with this product, and I'm sure you guys have seen this before. Um, so it fires that piece of code. So those are all pixels. Um, and you can do all sorts of things. You can pass any type of data about that user through a pixel as long as you know um, passes standards and is legal. Um, privacy rights, all that kind of stuff. So then there's conversion pixels, okay? So you just saw an example of a regular pixel on that first page. Now this is a cart fire. So the cart fired a pixel that says, hey, we're at the cart and this is the stuff, right? And then um, if I checked out and I proceeded with the order and I went to um, the thank you page, like it says, hey, thank you for your order. Um, it's been shipped out or whatever. When it hits that page, in general, they want to fire a conversion pixel, which for Meteora is this pixel right here. And some people have different pixels. Some people have one that does both, but that has its own limitations. So in this instance, um, if you wanted to say, hey, I want to fire a conversion, um, you would place this piece right here, which would make the establish the connection to the server. And then you would place this piece of code below it, which basically pushes items through that connection. So in this case, you can see MEQ push conversion. So it's gonna push this object called conversion. And then through that stream, when it reaches Meteora, Media goes, oh, Nick bought that item after he saw or clicked on one of our ads. And there's just a calculation that goes on there that we don't need to really worry about, but it basically looks through the database, sees when the last time Nick saw an ad was, saw with it was it within a certain time window did he click on the ad if so when this conversion pixel fires it's going to say hey um you know the reporting in this might have an extra conversion so you might go to the ads and you might see this one increment up to two and then you know you'd know that that was that order through other means but um that's just a great example of how how pixels work, how they connect to third-party companies and third-party ad systems like Meteora. Um, and then as far as uh, pixels go, you can actually send, um, you can fire conversion anytime you want. I said that you'd fire conversion pixel on the thank you page, it's very common, or like maybe after a lead is submitted. So if I go to mrprovider.com, which is a life insurance company, and I click on, um, submit this quote, maybe I clicked on an ad before this and I came here, I filled out my quote, that lead form submission when it says thanks for filling out your lead is a conversion for them because they that's their goal. They want to get a lead. They don't want to sell a product necessarily yet. Just get a lead. That's the first conversion. Then they could fire another conversion pixel when they actually sold a life insurance policy through an online portal, right? Um, places you can't use conversion pixels or at least not in a traditional sense, is like if I own a retail store and I throw out ads on the web that say, hey, target people that are interested in baby food, right? And I own a like a toddler store, um, then I'm showing ads for my store. 
they look, see the ad, they come into my store uh, in the real world, there's no way you can fire a piece of code on a real person walking through, right? So that's where different attribution um, takes hold. Like you could use beacon technology, you could use, um, there's some cool stuff at and is doing with Wi-Fi networks. Um, you can do um, latitude and longitude calls um, to like in mobile apps to see if they were in the vicinity of the retail store. Those are all like really advanced things. But another thing is you can also fire a conversion pixel on a button. So any developer could take this code and instead of just loading it in the background on every page load, while the page is here, before it loads another URL, if I hit see my quote, like right there, I could have fired a pixel that said filled out information incorrectly. And then I could serve ads to people based on the fact that they didn't finish putting in their stuff or they put in stuff that wasn't valid, like a false zip code or something. Um, you can literally fire one of these pieces of code on anything that matters to you. Um, so like, for example, here's a good example. Ford Car Builder might do um, car color, and then you might do red, and then leather equals no, right? So they might fire this piece of code when somebody builds a car online that's red but doesn't have leather. Then what you can go do is after that's bucketing people in, the pixels are taking people in and uh, segmenting them into things like we talked about earlier, like I'm in market for, I like the NHL, right? This is constantly happening on the internet. So um, if I go to segments, um, you can actually create a segment so that it targets that individual. So DSPs all have this. Um, DSP is integrated with Blue Kai, for example, you would select that segment from Blue Kai, but it would still run through the same advertising system. Uh, and that's how pixels basically work. Um, so you remember ESPN.com, I looked at NHL, Blue Kai bucketed me, um, and I'll show you what happens. So let's say, see how this category is NHL right here? So if I want to target every person that visited that page, that category, I can say NHL, Lovers, what we do. Um, I want to target people that visited there within the last 20 days, and I want people that haven't converted. So I don't want to target people that have already purchased NHL gear or whatever through my site because they've already bought. So they're a customer. I probably have their email address. I can just ping them, you know, with new offers and special stuff. I don't have to spend money on ads necessarily. So then I go to um, advanced controls, and you see URLs visited. So now I can right now the settings only has hasn't converted in 20 days. It doesn't know that I'm targeting uh, NHL people. So I can go to URLs and I can say has visited this URL. So now it'll be anybody that visited that URL in the last 20 days. If I do this NBA, that means anybody that visited either or any of these URLs. So I can do one per line. Now watch this. If I go to NHL and I click on this Blues. Um, that's San Jose. Okay, that's not a good example. Let me go to backcountry. Fans. Uh, I don't, Patagonia. Okay, so you can see Patagonia up here, right? Now, if I click on this Patagonia jacket, you can see Patagonia is still here. It didn't move. There's just this extra piece on the end here, right? So it knows it's this jacket. If I go like this and I copy that, now it's going to target, um, assuming backcountry.com, this is their account now. We're not talking about ESPN. Um, now it's going to target people that visited backcountry.com in the last 20 days that visited this jacket only. That's it. Um, if I wanted anybody that visited any Patagonia item, since that Patagonia part didn't change, I can put a star on the end of it, and it'll basically target, or target anybody that... Um, visited a Patagonia item. Because if I go back here, you can see Patagonia is still here. The URL structure doesn't change if I click on this other jacket. So it's basically saying anybody that visited a URL with this in front of the star makes it a catch-all. So no matter what it is on the end of here, it's gonna bucket those users. So this is really useful because you can get really targeted. Um, 
So that's what a Meteora Pixel does, but it's a good way to see how their connections happen through third-party sites and see this ghostery stuff because um, it gives you an idea of how many people and how many like third-party services are actually tracking you in any given moment. Uh, it's kind of creepy, but very powerful stuff. Um, and then here's another example uh, with the car color. You could do car color equals red, like we showed in the code earlier. And you could see a and leather equals yes. And now this, this would essentially char target anybody that vis visited that country, Patagonia items. And um, I guess car wasn't a good example. Assume this is jacket. Uh, and target everybody that only looked at red jackets that were Patagonia. And then were they leather? Yes. Otherwise, we're not going to target them with ads. So then when you go to create a campaign, you simply select this segment and it will know to target that individual with the campaign. So a bunch of filters um, can get really complex, but it's simple at its core. We're essentially just bucketing users, um, talking to the websites that are connected to us.